Today we're going to talk about everyone's favorite 100 card singleton format, Commander. Our devastation brought a lot of new toys that we can play with, and today we're going to talk about one in particular. Today we're going to talk about the Locust God. For four, a blue and a red, the Locust God is a 4-4 flying creature. It says whenever you draw a card, put a 1-1 blue and red insect token on the battlefield with flying in haste. And then for two, a blue and a red, you can draw a card, and if you do, discard a card. Of course, like all the other gods of our devastation, it says that when this creature dies, you may return it to your hand from the graveyard at the beginning of the next end step. So we're going to go into detail about him. We're, or we're going to talk about what all we can do with this creature. We're going to talk about all the possibilities. And we're going to discuss my personal commander deck that I've built around the Locust God. So, let's get to it. The Locust God. Big 4-4 four, four flying. Every time you draw a card, you get a 1-1 one, one insect token with flying in haste. And of course, like the other gods, when it dies, you return it to your hand at the end of the next end step from your graveyard. This is big because if you know anything about Commander, you know that whenever your Commander dies, it goes back to the Command Zone. And then the Commander costs an additional 2 generic mana to cast for every time that you cast it after the first time. You don't have to worry about that with these new commanders because when they die you can put them in the graveyard and then just return them to your hand and cast them for the original converted mana cost. So six mana is awful expensive anyway, but can you imagine having to play for eight or ten or twelve? Well with these commanders you don't have to worry about that as long as you don't have to worry about graveyard hate and whatever your meta that you're playing. But if you do of course you just send it back to the command zone and pay the additional two every time. But your chances are a lot less with these new commanders. We'll be talking about my personal commander deck that I've built around the Locust God, and it seems to do really, really well. Uh, it can get out of hand real quick, and I'm going to warn you now, if you're playing this deck, you will be the target at the table. I've played it at two different, two different meetings that we have here at the house, and both times, as soon as the commander hits the battlefield, if you don't have a way to protect it, they will kill it because it can get out of hand quick. So we'll start with our mana base. Um... Everything in the deck is going to draw cards except for the lands. So we're going to have uh, we're going to have 37 lands, 15 islands, 12 mountains. Uh, you can have whatever other uh, blue red dual lands that you want. Is it Boiler Works? Is it Guildgate? Uh, the blue red lands from um, Khans of Tarkir, uh, Spire Bluff Canal, stuff like that. Any other red blue lands that you want, whatever you have around or whatever you want to pay for, just make sure you have enough red blue lands that your mana will be fixed. Uh, some of the special lands that, that I like to run is uh, Reliquary Tower for no maximum hand size because you're going to be drawing a lot of cards. You don't want to have to be discarding more cards than you have to. So Reliquary Tower, um, it ta also it taps for mana, but it also says you have no maximum hand size. And then also a uh, Majoring Network, if you don't know about that, it's cards from Origins. You can pay one and tap it, put a storage counter on it. And then you can tap it, remove X storage counters, and add X colorless mana to your mana pool. We've got some big spells in this deck. We have a lot of X spells in this deck. So this will help late game for us to cast really, really big draw spells so that we can draw as many cards as we can to put as many creatures on the battlefield as we can to just kind of overwhelm everything. So Majoring Network kind of works a little bit overtime in this deck. And uh, it's used. It's going to be more, used more, like I said, mid-game and late game for your big instants and sorceries than anything else. Uh, that's it for the lands. Um, we're only running three enchantments, and of course, like I said, the enchantments are going to draw you cards as well. We run a Fevered Visions, uh, we run an Oath of Jace, and we run a Sphinx's Tutelage. The Sphinx's Tutelage by itself can be a win condition in this deck because you're drawing so many cards. If you're not familiar with Sphinx's Tutelage, it's a blue enchantment that says that um, when you draw a card, target opponent uh, mills the top two cards of their library. If they share the same color, they repeat the process. So they mill two. If they're both green or they're both the same color, they mill two more. If those share the same color, they mill two more. And they keep milling two until the two do not share the same color. So if you have like a mono white, mono red, mono green commander that you're playing against, chances are that the first two are going to match. And usually you can get more than one uh, trigger whenever you draw a card if you're playing against a monocolored deck. Now some of these new four color and three color decks that we're seeing and of course five color decks it's a little bit harder to get that trigger but of course you're going to get the uh, two cards that are going to be milled anyway. And it's two cards for each card that you draw. And you're drawing a lot of cards in this deck. You're, 
you might mill yourself um, in this deck because you are drawing so many cards. But uh, every time you draw a card, of course, you're going to get a creature, so there's always an upside to that. And, of course, with Sphinx's Tutelage out, it's a win condition all by itself because you can mill all your opponents just because you're drawing cards. Um, and then, of course, it also says for five and a blue, you draw a card and a discard a card. So even if nothing else, you can just pay six mana, draw a card, make them mill, and you get a creature out of it. So six mana is a little expensive, but you're getting a creature, you're milling them, getting them closer to the end of their deck, and uh, it just makes the game go a little bit better. There's 13 instances in this deck. Um, the two big instances in this deck is, of course, uh, Blue Sun's Zenith and Pull from Tomorrow. Those are our big X spells that Major Network is going to help us out with. Of course, you know, Pull from Tomorrow is a new card. Um, two blue uh, and X. You draw X cards, then discard a card. And, of course, Blue Sun's Zenith is three blue, two X, or something like that. You draw a bunch of cards, and you put Blue, blue Sun's Zenith back into your library. Or shuffle it back into your library. You can, and these are also at instant speed, so you can do them at the end of your opponent's turn, draw a whole bunch of cards, put a whole bunch of 1-1s one on the battlefield, the next turn just swing back at them for the kill, or if they go for the alpha strike, you can play that, draw a bunch of cards, get a bunch of 1-1 one -one blockers, just to kind of protect you. So the instant speed draw spells are very, very important in this deck, much more important than the sorcery speed draw spells. But we have a lot more sorcery speed draw spells, just because um, when we make creatures they have haste but we also have those instant speed draw spells just so that we can have that little bit of uh, the option that if we need to if we need to use our creatures on the defensive or if we want to use our creatures on the offensive we have that capability with the instances that we have in this deck uh, we're playing blue of course because he's a blue red commander but there's only three counter spells in the entire deck this is not a control deck in any way this is not trying to control the board state. This is trying to overwhelm the board state to just astronomical numbers. And then you just swing and win with your Air Force. But we do have three counter spells to protect our commander and to try to disrupt a combo or to try to protect our creatures from a board wipe or something like a detention sphere or something like that. So we're running Mystic Confluence, Disdainful Stroke, and Rewind is our counter package. Uh, in this deck. And like I said, they're, they are just there to protect us. We're not trying to control the game. We are trying to win the game as quick as we can with overpowering numbers from all the cards that we are drawing. They are 10 creatures in the entire deck, um, not counting the Locust God. And we don't have many creatures because all of our draw spells make creatures for us. So we have an overwhelming number of creatures, even without actually having creatures on the battlefield. So we're only running 10 creatures, but all these creatures draw cards. Just like every other card in the deck beside the lands, we're going to be drawing cards with our creatures. Uh, niv Mizzet, uh, Draco Genius is 2, blue, blue, and a red, and a red. It's 5-5 five, five flyer. Uh, when niv Mizzet deals damage to a player, you draw a card. Uh, for a blue and a red, you draw a card, discard a card. So for a blue and a red, you draw a card. Um, excuse me. For a blue and a red, you deal 1 damage to our creature or player. So blue and a red, you deal one damage to a creature or player, draw a card, discard a card, and you get to make a 1-1. One, one. So two mana to do all that is pretty good. Now yes, Niv Mizzic is very expensive coming in at six mana, but once it's on the battlefield, you're not really worried about it because every time you deal damage, you're drawing more cards. And like I said, that's what this deck wants to do. My favorite creature in the entire deck is, is Arjun the Shifting Flame. For 4 and a red to blue, it's also a 5-5 five, five flyer. But it says, when you cast a spell, put the cards in your hand on the bottom of your library in any order, and then draw that many cards. So if you have 6 cards in hand, uh, you play a brainstorm, you put the other 5 on the bottom, and draw 5 more. Every time you play a spell, you're filtering your hand to the bottom of your library, drawing that many more cards, getting that many insect tokens on the battlefield with haste, and flying. It can get out of hand really, really fast once this gets on the battlefield. Um, if this thing sticks for more than one turn, chances are you can pretty much win the game outright because every time you cast a one mana spell, you're making five or six flying haste tokens. You just overpower the board and you win the game. So those are the two real big creatures. Uh, of course, said so there's eight more creatures. The entire deck list will be in the description below if you're interested. Also, you can. Uh, DM me on, you can uh, send me a message on Twitter, 
you can send me a message here you can leave a comment and I will um, email you the complete deck list if you're interested um, we're just going over the highlights the big stuff that really makes the big difference in the deck because I didn't want to make a video showing you 100 individual cards because I just don't feel like you have that kind of time. Uh, we have 12 artifacts in the deck. Of course, we have uh, Lightning Greaves and Swift Foot Boots to protect our commander. Give them Hexproof, Shroud. Um, because once this thing hits the battlefield, uh, the Locust God hits the battlefield, it's just going to have a bullseye on its head. And people are going to be trying to take it out. So if you could give it Haste or Shroud and just keep it on the battlefield... The only thing you really have to worry about after that is like a board wipe. Um, and you know, there's not a whole lot of those. Of course, you have Damnation and Wrath of God, but they can only have one in their deck at a time. So if you can give uh, if you can give your commander Shroud or Hexproof and just don't attack with it, you don't have to worry about it getting killed. You could pretty much just run the game after that because every time you're just going to make a whole bunch of creatures. So the Lightning Greaves and Swift Foot Boots are there just to protect your um, commander. Then we also run a uh, Howling Mine. Uh, if you don't know what this is, it's an artifact that says at the beginning of each player's turn they draw an additional card. So of course this lets us and everyone else draw two cards per turn. And it helps because not only are you getting two cards per turn, but you're getting an additional to uh, insect token. But everybody else is getting to draw two cards also, so they kind of leave that artifact alone until they just have to get rid of it. So the whole time you're getting extra card value, you're getting extra creatures, but they're getting to draw extra cards, and they kind of just let that stay on the battlefield as long as they can. Thought Vessel is an artifact that taps for a colorless mana, but it also has the Reliquary Tower effect, to where you have no maximum hand size. So it's good to have a couple of those in there, in case you can't find one, or one that's destroyed, you can have the other. Because like I said, you're drawing a bunch of cards, and you want to be able to hold on to many of those cards as you can, so that you can make more and more creatures. The big artifact in this deck that is just broken when you put it in this deck is Teferi's Puzzle Box. The four mana artifact that says at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player puts all cards in their hand at the bottom of their library and then draws that many cards. So at the beginning of your turn, you're going to put all cards on the bottom of your library and then draw that many cards at the beginning of your turn and put that many 1-1 flying haste insect tokens on the battlefield. This, uh, accompanied with Arjun, you have your turn, you got six cards in hand, you put six cards on the bottom of your library, you draw six cards, get six tokens, play a spell, put five on the bottom, draw five, get five tokens. So on your turn, you've played one spell, drawn 11 cards, put 11 one ones on the battlefield. It gets out of hand quick. You overpower the board so fast with this artifact with Fairy's Puzzle Box and Arjun on the battlefield at the same time you could easily win that turn if you have enough mana because your creatures have haste and flying. Um, so on to the sorceries. We're gonna have we have 18 sorcery spells, serum visions, uh, faithless looting of courses in there. All of most of these are draw spells, let you draw some cards. But our sorceries are also going to do a few other things for us. Our sorceries are going to let us take extra turns with cards like temporal trespass, uh, part the water veil. Uh, temporal mastery uh, all those say take an additional turn and then also everyone will be discarding their hand and drawing new cards that works for you because every time you draw cards you get a to token so we're going to run uh, reforge the soul wheel of fate collective defiance and windfall so everyone discards their hand and draws seven cards or that many cards depending on what the card says so you're keeping your opponent from getting to keep their hand that they may want to keep you get a new set of cards that just draw more cards and you get creatures off of the cards that you've drawn. So there's a lot of draw, there's a lot, lot of uh, discard in this deck. You know, you're filtering your hand a lot, you're putting it at the bottom of your library, you're putting it into your graveyard. So you think, well, I'm going to mill myself because I'm drawing so many cards. Well, I've thought of that too. Um, the memory part of Commit to Memory says shuffle your hand and your graveyard back into your deck and then draw, draw seven cards. So everything that you put into your graveyard, you shuffle it right back in, draw a new hand, get a whole bunch more creatures, and we also run Days Undoing that says the exact same thing. Shuffle your hand in your graveyard into your library, then draw that many cards. So we're discarding a lot of cards, we're drawing a lot of cards, and then we're shuffling them right back into our library to do it all over again. So we just have an endless supply of creatures as long as Locust God is on the battlefield. 
Our Planeswalker package is small and it's inexpensive. Uh, we're not running uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Uh, if you had the funds and you wanted to pay $60 for a card, put it in there. It'd be great. Um, it would do what Jace the Mind Sculptor does. So, I mean, if you, if you have it on hand or you have the funds to go get one, yes, put it in there. I don't have $60 spent on one card, so I worked around it a little bit. Uh, we are going to run uh, Chandra Flamecaller for her zero ability to discard all the cards in your hand, draw that many plus one. Uh, also, Jace Beller, so everyone gets to draw a card. And Dak Faden, so that you can draw two cards and discard two cards. And also for Dak's minus ability to take control of target artifact, because there's a lot of artifacts in Commander that can just wreck a game and turn things in a different direction. Well, Dak Faden, if you can take control of that uh, card, you can turn things back into your favor really, really fast. So that's what Dak Faden is going to be for, not only for his draw ability, but also because he is the greatest thief of the multiverse. To go get that artifact that's giving you a hard time. Uh, we're also running uh, Jason Raveler's Secrets and Chandra the Firebrand for her copy, instant, or sorcery minus ability. So if you play something big, let you draw a bunch of cards, um, you minus Chandra, and you get to do it twice. Um, and that is pretty much the deck. Uh, like I said, this deck is great. I've played with it a few times. It gets out of hand really, really fast. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I uh, hope you, uh, if you want to play it, feel free. Uh, let me know how it works for you. If you have any comments about how I can improve the deck or how you would improve the deck, uh, leave them in the comment section below. Like I said, you can always in you can always uh, message me on Twitter. You can message me here. Um, if you want the deck, if you want the full deck list. I'll try to leave it in the description below, but also if you send me a message, I will shoot the full deck list out to you, no problem. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Follow us on Twitter, uh, at untipped, Untapped MTG. We also play some video games over on Twitch. We don't play much Magic, but we stream a lot of other video games on Twitch, Untapped MTG on Twitch. Uh, go over there and give us a follow, and uh, check out LegitMTG.com if you've got some time. Uh, have a good day. We'll see you later.